this is gonna be one of the most useful and informative videos that I've ever done because I know this to be one of the biggest struggles for producers. Even experienced producers sometimes will feel like their drums are just so boring. Nothing special happening, sounds are generic, repetitive patterns, but today I'm gonna give you 10 tips that you can apply instantly to transform your drums. No matter what genre you produce, this is gonna apply to you. So I'll keep this real approach, I'll make these drums from scratch with you, and this way I'm sure that all the tips are gonna just come out. There are obviously many more, but I'll try to give you the 10 tips that I use the most and that I use every single day. So let's get into this. Okay, so a few days ago I found this loop here, this synth loop, and I put a little baseline on it. So my first tip is actually not a technical tip, it's more about approach and concept. So how do you usually make drums, with MIDI or audio? Because you know, both ways are great, but my first tip is try to do both. Even if you're more used to one, and I'm more used to MIDI, but years ago when I started making music, I was only making drums with audio. So the reason why I say to use them both is that they give you different options to do things. Also using one or the other is going to give you different ideas, so if you're more comfortable making drums in audio or MIDI, stick to that, that's fine, but try to include some of your layers, some of your samples uh, using the other method. So the second tip that I'm going to give you today is again not technical and this is about trying to stay away from the comfort zone in the beginning. So what I mean by that is in this case I have this loop which is 118 BPM. I know what you're thinking. Oh 118, that's close to 120. This might be like EDM, this might be like house music. Kick, four on the floor, clap on the two and the four good open I had on the upbeat and you get that like super common which is good and if that's the genre that you're producing it has to have those specific things about the genre which is okay but at first what I try to do is stay away from thinking about the tempo thinking about the genre I like to open a mic like now and just record myself while I listen to the loop and I start like beatboxing or not beatboxing I can't really beatbox but like vibing around the loop okay so that's what I'm gonna do right now and don't worry if you don't have a mic you can still do it like with the phone just grab the phone open voice notes let's see what where this brings me I was not thinking, I was not thinking about the genre, I was not thinking about the tempo, I was just like going with the vibe. And I think this is super helpful to be creative from the start before you even start going into a like certain direction. Yeah, this is cool. See, here I just did something a little bit different with my mouth because in my head this sound has to be different from this sound even if they're both hi-hats. So this is already telling me that those should be two separate sounds, like two different sounds, not the same hi-hat playing twice. One. See, I did like a lower pitch. But I can also layer this, this little beatbox thing to make it even more interesting and more unique because you know, it's, it's my voice. So it cannot be more unique than that. Okay, so I'm looking for some hats here. This is interesting. And also if you noticed in what I did, there were a lot of ghost notes. So I really want to find also some short hi-hats that I can use as ghost notes and stuff like that. That's, that's nice. Oh, love this, love this. Okay, so now I'm ready to use these sounds that I just selected and try to rebuild that pattern that I was doing with my mouth. And this gives me the chance to introduce tip number three, which is don't always draw the MIDI using the mouse, just by doing this or using the pen, doing these kind of things, because this is limiting your creativity by a lot. So think about this. If you're making drums in audio, you don't even have the option of doing it differently. You can just like take samples, drag them into the grid and that's it. You can for sure tweak the audio, but you don't have the chance to play it in, which is what I like to do most of the times. And this is also going to leave a lot of room for like errors, experiments, random things that could just happen by messing up. So it's going to be something like that. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. And now you're probably thinking, what are you doing? You are not recording, are you crazy? Now what? I'm not. Actually, I did it on purpose. And this is a little trick that I like to use. Ableton has this function. Now I can click this button right here. And it was actually 
recording whatever I was doing without me pressing record. Because you know that feeling when like you try something and before recording, it all sounds so good. You keep playing like cool patterns. As soon as you press record, you start messing it all up. Performance is terrible. The timing is terrible. Like you just hate it. So I found out that for me, it works better most of the times to just like vibe with the loop like I was doing. And if later I think that I did something cool, I can always do this and like recover what I was playing. By playing it like this with the pads, I have like imperfections, like the timing is not perfect, but it sounds like real. And then if it's too far off, I can always adjust it, but I really want to keep a little bit of that human feeling, some imperfections that make it also more interesting. And this is probably one of the reasons why your drums are so boring, because nothing is really happening. Nothing is ever changing. Loops, patterns, like they just go on for like three, four minutes. This way, it's impossible that I did the same thing twice, different velocities every single time. The timing, of course, is never the same. And that's exactly what I like about making drums like this, because they're like a little bit more unpredictable. And especially if I haven't like studied the perfect part that I have to learn and play exactly like that, what I'm doing is always going to be a little bit different. This one, I don't want to hear. This was supposed to be here, I think. Yeah, exactly. So I guess this is my tip number four today, which is move things manually, humanize as much as possible your drums and connect it to this like macro tip. I think I have some sub tips, which is just the way I'm going to process these drums that I played. First of all, I would say timing. I'll just correct whatever I feel it's too far off. Okay, so this is definitely late. So I think I'm going to put this right here. Okay, so this was supposed to be something else. So I moved some things manually and now I want to quantize some of these hits, just some of them. I'm not going to quantize the whole thing because like I said, I want to keep that real feeling. But I want to point out one thing about how I quantize things. So if you go in here in quantize settings in Ableton, you can quantize to like the current grid, which is what I'd like to do because let's say that sometimes I want to quantize in 16th notes. Sometimes I want to quantize in like eight notes. I don't want to every single time open this menu and come here and select a different one. If I need to do that, I'm just going to change the grid from here, you know? But as you can see, I only adjust the start of the note, not the end of the note. And there's a reason for that, because you'll see that some samples, if you quantize also the end, what Ableton is going to do is basically this. Let's, let's make an example. Let's say that I want to quantize this guy right here, okay? And I have my options like that. So now the length of each sample is exactly corresponding to the grid, but that's not what I want because depending if you use the sample in one shot mode or classic mode, this is going to really affect the length of the sample. And I don't want all the samples to be the same length because, you know, at the end of the day, if I want just to make the sample longer, I can do this and make it exactly snap to the grid. And now as we keep going, you'll see why this is so important. For example, this guy right here, I really want it to be quantized this one same so the next sub tip that i have is velocities so velocities in case you don't know is the volume of each accent so the higher the velocity the louder the sound this velocity right here 124 the maximum is 127 so, so this is like almost the maximum and some of these are definitely too much this one has to be very quiet yeah better better but i still want to reduce all three yeah, this accent needs to be quieter than this one. And this needs to be louder instead. So why do I think that velocities are so important? Just because if you don't have variation in your velocities, you don't have dynamics. Your sound is always going to be like that. You're not going to feel like anything is ever changing and it's going to feel repetitive. Just by playing the sounds with the pads or with the keyboard, I have some velocities. I don't have to like take each sample one by one and now tweak the velocity because most of them I already like it because I played it with the right intention and this is saving me not only time but this is giving me the real feeling that I had when I listened to the loop for the first time. So I quickly mentioned before the three modes of the sampler. These three modes would require like a separate video but for now I'm just gonna tell you that the classic mode is the one that you use if you want to control the envelopes of the sample, which I'm gonna do right now. So don't worry, I'm gonna explain this. And uh, one shot is treating the sound exactly like it would be if you drag the sample and used it as audio with some cool things that you can do in MIDI that you couldn't do in audio. I have an idea with this sound. Remember that my beatbox, I used a different sound here. <laughs> 
first of all, it needs to be pitched down. But now you're probably thinking, yes, this sample is too long. What can we do? I want to cut the sample exactly here when bar five starts. In audio, this is one of those things that, I mean, you would easily do that. You would just drag the sample right here, cut it, and that's it. But you can still do it in MIDI. Make sure that it snaps to the grid. And then I'm going to put this in gate mode. Gate mode means that when the MIDI stops playing, also the sample gets cut out. Listen now, you'll see what I mean. Right? See how it's cutting the sample exactly at here at bar 17. Instead on this one, what I really want to do is using some envelopes. I want to make the tail of the sound a little bit shorter. I want to make the sound decay a little bit. And the way to do it is simply going here into the classic mode. And that's what I'm going to do now. A little bit more release. Yeah, I like this. Okay, so as you can see, both gating and envelopes give you the chance of really playing with the samples a little bit more, which is something that with audio you could do, yes, but it would become really difficult to go like through each sample and make them sound differently. Let me see if I can put this beatbox in a way that's like helping and not just disturbing. Perfect. Okay, listen to this. I like that, I like that. And I just had an idea which is bringing me to tip number five. I guess it's five. And tip number five is swing. So this is totally optional. Not all the tracks need swing. Some tracks will not need it, but in this case, I think swinging the drums a little bit, actually like swinging the whole thing a little bit might help with the groove. I like to have the swing already in the session, even before I decide to use it or not. Like this is in my template. The way I can do this is just by selecting the swing that I want, which is this one, and now choosing the percentage of the swing that's gonna be applied. I apply the swing right here, also do this. Otherwise, they're just gonna be off. I'm gonna apply it also to the bass. So let's start to put it in and let's see where I start to feel it. Oh. I already like it. This is this is this make me move. Let me try like I don't know 50. Let's see. Oh, this is actually cool though. Ooh. And now I need pop 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 Oh my God, see? See, this is just an idea that, that popped out of my head. Let me, let me record it before I before I forget it. Okay, 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 cool, cool, cool. I'm also gonna use this. Bear with me, I'll go back to the drums in a second. Oh, I like this. Little bit of modulation here. Okay, okay, that's enough, that's enough. So I definitely need a kick now. For the kick, so, oops, about to destroy the desk. Okay, so for the kick, in this case, it's gonna be four on the floor. It's definitely gonna be electronic influence, this beat. So I'm gonna go with big kick, which, you know, it's my favorite synthesizer for drums, like no rivals. This is like a game changer for making cool kicks. You can find the link in the description if you wanna buy it. I think it's like 20 bucks, like super cheap and amazing. And in this case, I'm gonna draw the kick in because I want them all at the same velocity. Nothing that has to change with the kick. I like that sample. So what you're hearing now is only the body of the kick, which is this section right here, but you can add samples on top of it, like to make body of the kick and top of the kick, you can really create layers. And that's my next tip, which is tip number six. So layering is super important, but you have to know how to do it. You don't have to do it if it's not necessary just for the sake of doing it. But if you feel like doing it because something is missing, that's definitely going to help you in making your drum sound more pro. So in this case, just for the purpose of like showing you, I'm not going to create a layer using Big Kick, but I'm going to keep this as the body and I'm going to make a new drum rack. And here I'm going to load some more kick samples, J Dilla samples, a little bit like distorted. Could also be two layers, one a little bit more distorted maybe the other one a little bit more acoustic so i like this one a lot as like the distorted layer this is interesting 
That's cool. Okay, this is a very good top. So let me start from this. We already have the body coming from Big Kick. All of this, we don't need that. If you have too many frequencies overlapping, it might become a real mess. So what I'm trying to do is having this layer only covering the top of the kick. So I don't need anything below. I don't know exactly. I'll see now. And I also want to play a little bit with the attack because that's going to change actually the phase and how the kick layer. Uh, if I make it start from here, I like it actually better. And I can use the envelopes again, like I showed you before, to shape the sound, make it shorter. This would be without the envelopes. This is with it, just a little bit tighter. Let me see this layer right here, the distorted one. Okay, I'm starting to like it here. I want to keep a little bit of that tail, but not that much. Okay, better. And I can also filter it a little bit and drive it. Super happy with this. That's what I'm talking about. Just by layering a little bit. I, I did nothing special here, but... What if I transpose this? Or this one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like it better. Okay, I just had another idea. A very cool thing that I can do to my beatbox to make it sound, again, moving, changing, is adding a flanger or a phaser, actually. I like this. This is subtle, but it's actually happening. What if I also put a flanger after it? Yeah. So I'm just going to compress the kick a little bit. And that's something that I like to do a lot when I layer things. I really want to make sure that the two sounds can blend well together. And the best way to do it is just by compressing them together. Boost a little bit the low end because we lost some low end with the compression. There you go. Listen to the difference. This is incredible. So tight. Wow. Crank it even more. Yeah, a little bit of distortion. Incredible. That's incredible. Okay, now as we add elements, it starts to be a little bit messy, with, especially with kick and bass. And so we get to tip number seven. You know it, it's kind of obvious. We got to add some sidechain. So to do this, I'm going to use LFO tool. Faster and easier, especially in this case, we have a beat with the kick four on the floor. There was a hi-hat that I haven't used, but that I really love, which was this one. I want to layer the main hat with that sound, which is out of control, but we can fix it using the envelopes again. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. There was one more cool thing in that second beatbox that I did. This, this. So that's absolutely percussions. And this brings me to tip number eight. So tip number eight is don't underestimate percussions because percussions can make a big, big, big difference in your drums. You can use them in smart ways to have like little accents happening here, happening there, new elements appearing, disappearing. I think that's key. I need something like that. I don't know what that is. Not really. Okay, so while scrolling here, I just had like a little idea. I'm gonna use this as audio and that's not gonna happen again till here. And one little thing that I can do with audio is pressing command and uh, arrow, like arrow left, right? And it basically nudges the clip. Okay, also same thing. See, just by playing a little bit with the delay and choosing a tambourine, you have something new, you know? A little sound, it's not gonna, it's not gonna get boring. Okay, cool. There's some swing that I played because I, I was feeling the swing, I played it in, I like it. I'm gonna leave it like this. It could actually need like hand percussion. Like, let me see. Ah, come on. What? Nothing? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I had in mind. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 
Let me see if I did something else. And come, come. Love this. I'm gonna use this come. as a percussion. Come. No, actually, I don't want to hear. This is coming out so good. Okay, now I finally got to tip number nine. We're almost there, so stay with me. And this is interesting because I don't know if you've noticed, but I haven't used a single loop yet. We already have so many cool layers, so many cool things happening in the drums, and I still haven't used a single loop. I said it in the past in one of like the other videos that I've made. When I can, I stay away from loops in the beginning because this way I can really make room for my creativity to come out and just do whatever I'm feeling. And that's when I start to use loops loops to see if loops can give me ideas that I haven't had yet. Like this one is a very sparse loop. This needs to be here. That's super cool. That happened randomly, but I don't like this in this position. I want this to be here. Okay, now I'm gonna consolidate this and uh, I'm gonna apply the swing. Love this. What I like to do with these kind of loops is chop them up and see what works and what doesn't. So as I tweak this loop, we go straight into tip number 10, which is use the accent the right way. And uh, what I mean is that you can definitely hear in this beat where the accents are, so especially if you have a loop like this one that already has accents. This is definitely an accent compared to this one. What do you do if you want to like adjust the accent? There's a great way that you can do this. Obviously you can go here, adjust the volume of the clip, but I like sometimes to use LFO tool because this gives me a very visual way. For example, I like this note, but I want this to be way quieter. This guy needs to be really really tamed. I want to tame another one of these hits. I'm going to use another LFO tool just to be more clear on what I'm doing. I really want the accents to be like ta -ta -ta -ta, instead of ta -ta 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 -ta. now I hear ta -ta 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 -ta. instead I want ta -ta -ta -ta. exactly. I don't want any of this. This is definitely too much. Oh yeah. And this one, I want to quantize it because we have the swing, so it's going to be perfectly quantized, but still swung. But pay attention, I'm going to quantize only this, not all the midi clip. Yeah. And I'm going to put just a little bit of random panning. I like this as like a little clap. Yeah. This is not happening, like not even here. This is happening only once. I like this shaker as a little thing happening on the upbeat, but not like the classic hat. So you probably know this already, but in this case, like the shaker is a little bit late and I can always do this like minus, I don't know, 15 milliseconds from here. You can still put it in grid, but Ableton is just going to shift it without you seeing it. Mm. Gee. Better. Let me tune it right. Let me check because my ear says that this is not perfect. Actually, let me try to do it by ear and see if I can get it perfect. I think this is kind of good. 12 or like 13. Let me see. Let me see if I'm right. Oh my God. Look at this. I missed by like three cents. My pitch is off by like three cents. I want to find this tambourine loop, but I want to find one with no accents. So this way I can show you the real power of using like LFO tool to like accent only the notes that you want. I would like to do this. Okay. This one has to be loud. That's what I would like. Yeah. And there's one thing that I could do, but in this accent right here, perfect. So see, I did a little change here with the audio to make sure that we have the accent in this position, but I'm also supporting this decision with LFO tool. I suggest you also use smooth mode so you don't have clicks and stuff. We can use another LFO tool to have a little bit of side chain. Doesn't have to be massive. Love this. 
okay now at, at this at this point just let me put that open i had i tried to stay away from it actually let me put this on the four here random and i'm gonna stretch it can i stretch it if it sounds bad even better oh listen to this glitch i love that i'm gonna leave it absolutely but i gotta really make it shorter see that's why i don't like to use audio in these cases i'm gonna put this into the simpler and i'm gonna use gate mode that's the thing that i was talking about in the beginning right by playing it this way every little sample is a little bit different Which makes it interesting, which doesn't make it boring. Hold on, hold on. I gotta take this. Prendi una, una cosa da sei e non di più. Mm, ci sono lattine o birre? O oh, vetro, scusa. Prendi lattine, prendi modello. Okay, guys, I gotta stop because otherwise I could just go on for hours. So we got to the end of this video. I would have so many more tips to give you, but you know, this would become like a masterclass in a three hours video. I cannot do that. But I really hope that I gave you a lot of insight into my like thought process, how I approach drums. I'm sure that this is going to be super useful for all of you, no matter what genre you produce, because most of these things that I showed you are not really related to the genre. So now you're ready to really transform your drums and make them sound pro. No more boring drums allowed. Thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of it as always if you have any questions leave them below in the comments so hit the like button if you like the video subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and i'll see you in the next one